Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on pancreatic cancer management. If you have missed the previous part, we have finished discussing the clinical presentation as well as a stepwise algorithmic diagnostic plan that we follow as well as the role of biopsy. So now we are going to discuss the points on treatment and follow-up. We are going to look at the algorithms of management of pancreatic cancer and relevant points. So the first important topic that you need to understand is that after we have diagnosed and after we have done our assessment of staging, the most important point is whether the jaundice needs to be brought down. So what are the advantages of biliary drainage? It helps in treatment of cholangitis. If the patient is in cholangitis, then the stenting is required. Nutritional optimization, if the patient is very weak, then this is helpful. Prior to chemotherapy in advanced disease, biliary drainage is always required. Most centers will not give chemotherapy if the bilirubin is more than 3. So that is one point where biliary drainage helps. If there is coagulopathy in cases with very high bilirubin, so people have operated pancreatic cancer cases even at bilirubin of 20. But what we have observed is that there is a lot of oozing in the surgery. There is diffuse oozing not relevant to surgical issues. And this is usually seen in cases with bilirubin more than 15. So that is why biliary drainage sometimes helps in coagulopathy correction. Disadvantage, we know that stents by themselves can cause cholangitis. The procedure can lead to pancreatitis. Severe inflammatory reaction and this reaction can make the surgery very difficult. So that is also a point. We have published data on stent-related infective complications after Vipal's procedure and you can search my name on this topic and you will find the data, which is actual data of around 140 patients that we have managed in our unit. So, stent-related infective complications are a real problem. It is not just literature. So, when you think of biliary drainage, think of these points and then apply concepts. See each patient differently. Don't make it a protocol that we want biliary drainage in all cases. It is a case-to-case -case based tailor approach that helps in the long run. Coming to staging laparoscopy, we know that it helps in identifying peritoneal seedlings. Whenever the tumor is large, more than 4 cm, when there is bulky nodal disease, if there is suspicious metastatic disease after extensive workup, there is extreme weight loss or back pain, suggestive egg plexus involvement, and after neoadjuvant therapy, before opening the patient, if you are going to do an open surgery, then staging laparoscopy is helpful. Again, just like PET scan, if the tumor marker is very high, it may indicate vascular involvement or it may indicate metastasis. So this is also a point where staging laparoscopy will be helpful. All cases of borderline resectable and locally advanced pancreatic cancer should undergo staging laparoscopy. So if you are asked indications of staging laparoscopy in pancreatic cancer or if you want to apply this knowledge in practice, then these are the points where we look at doing staging laparoscopy. Now coming to algorithms on management, the easiest algorithm is of resectable pancreatic cancer. Even though a lot of trials are coming up in neoadjuvant therapy, as of now, for resectable pancreatic cancer, neoadjuvant therapy is not working. And the latest guidelines suggest that these cases should undergo surgery if the patient has ECOG performance status 0 or 1. Adjuvant therapy is indicated in all cases. If there is contraindication to modified Fulfiri Nox, then you can look at a combination of Gemcitabine, Capcitabine, Gemcitabine, Paclitaxel or 5-FU alone. Otherwise, modified Fulfiri Nox is preferred in adjuvant therapy. Remember that there are a lot of trials that are now trying to study the role of neoadjuvant therapy in resectable pancreatic cancer. But so far, the standard of care is upfront surgery followed by adjuvant therapy. 
one of the trial design that we had studied is the NORPACT one, which was in 2023. And this trial was trying to compare a standard of care treatment that is ARM1, which is surgery followed by adjuvant therapy vis-a-vis a neoadjuvant concept where you have to do a restaging CT. You also need to do drainage of the bile ducts if the jaundice is high. Then four cycles of new adjuvant therapy followed by surgery followed by adjuvant therapy. However, when we saw the data, the median OS was actually higher with upfront surgery. And this is a very important point. Even the patient proportion that was alive at 18 months was higher with upfront surgery, 73% compared to new adjuvant therapy where it was 60%. So NORPAC-1 was a negative trial where it comes to new adjuvant therapy for resectable pancreatic cancer. Lot of other trials, but this is one named trial, so we thought we'll discuss. Now, coming to borderline resectable pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, and this is the ESMO 23 guideline. For borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, new adjuvant therapy does help. It also helps in selecting a biological favorable disease. What that means is that if the patient is on neoadjuvant therapy and there is progression of disease, then surgery is not going to help. What are the different regimens? The regimens are same that are used in the adjuvant setting for rejectable pancreatic cancer. So what we do in neoadjuvant therapy is we can give fulfirinox or we can give gemcitabine and nepaclitexel. Assess the patient after four cycles. Then Surgical exploration is done if there is no progression, the patient is fit and there are no contraindications to surgery. If any of these are present, then surgery is not going to help. After rejection, you go into adjuvant therapy. So that is how borderline rejectable pancreatic cancer is treated in the current standard of care. New adjuvant therapy, assessment, surgery, adjuvant therapy, basically the second arm of NORPACT-1 trial. A lot of studies have undergone in the new adjuvant therapy setting for borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. SPECT-05 is the latest that you can see 2023 and even this trial has suggested a role of new adjuvant therapy in borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. If you want to study this topic in detail, then these are the trials that you need to go through in detail. But a crux of this is that neoadjuvant therapy is recommended when it comes to borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. So we have discussed resectable pancreatic cancer and we have discussed borderline resectable pancreatic cancer. In the next part, we will go into details of the rediscover guidelines and we will also look at the management of locally advanced as well as metastatic pancreatic cancer. Thank you.